Let me share my screen. Okay, so for this afternoon class, we'll be discussing uh, the solution of first order differential equations classified under the type homogeneous differential equations. So before uh, we can solve a particular differential equation as a homogeneous differential equations, there's a need for us to establish first that it is homogeneous. And for us to be able to establish that that your DE, your first order DE is homogeneous, there's a need for you first to know what a homogeneous function is. So let me start in this slide. So a function, a function of X and Y, meaning a function having variables X and Y is said to be homogeneous of degree N. If there exists a constant N, where N is a positive whole number such that for every quantity R, a variable it may be or a constant, your function here uh, is able to preserve its original form. What do I mean by that? If in this particular function having variables x and y, I will change x and y to rx and ry, meaning I multiply my variables with r, the chosen variable that I want to, rep to represent uh, here, the original function after uh, factoring, R, factoring R raised to N is still the same function that was originally given to you. So in that case, uh, you'll be able to tell that your particular function is homogeneous. Now, for it uh, to be easier to follow, so let's say, for example, you have this function of x and y. So this is x squared plus 2xy plus y squared. Then we change all the x and y variables to rx and ry. So x would be changed to rx and squared. So this would be the resulting uh, form. Then x and y here will be changed to rx and ry. And then your y squared will be ry squared. So that would be r squared y squared. If you're going to factor out all the r's present, so in the middle term, you also have r squared. So your common factor is r squared. If you factor it out, your original function here, the original function x squared plus 2x squared plus y squared is actually present. So this is your original function, and this is the function that you have after factoring r squared. So we can say that this particular function in X and Y is homogeneous of second degree because after you have factored out already R raised to a certain power N, your original function is preserved. So this is still your original function. So second degree because the exponent of the R that you were able to factor out is 2. Now, you may not do it like this crudely. This is a crude way of doing checking. You may actually just check the degree of each of your terms. Okay, so your first term is second degree. I think you know what degree is from algebra. Your second term, your middle term is also second degree because x is raised to one and y is raised to one. So the, the overall degree is second degree and the last term is also second degree. So if all the terms in your function have the same degree, the said function is homogeneous. So this is second degree, this is second degree, this is second degree. So this function of x and y is said to be homogeneous of second degree. Now question, what will happen if this is second degree, however this one is third degree, this one is second degree. We say that the function is non-homogeneous. This functions class, the function of x and y, are the functions that you will see later as coefficients of your differentials. So for your DE to be said to be homogeneous in the first place, these functions, which are coefficients of your differential, should be homogeneous. Let's say, for example, we have the second one. Here, the first degree, the, the first term is fifth degree, four plus one, that's five. The second term is fifth degree in Y. So we say that our function is homogeneous fifth degree. Why? Because the degree of each of the terms are the same. And it's fifth degree because the sum of the exponents of the first term and the exponent of the only variable in the second term are equal. 
So polynomials are homogeneous if all the terms are of the same degree. If they are not of the same degree, then we say the function or the said polynomial is not homogeneous. Okay, let's move on. Now, let's say for example, your differential equation is in this form. The m of x and y dx plus the n of x and y dy is equal to zero. As a review, we refer to this dx and dy as differentials, and we refer to this m of x and y and n of x and y as coefficients of your differentials. And these coefficients are the functions that we need to check first whether they are homogeneous or not. Now, when these two functions here, representing the coefficients of your differentials are already homogeneous, they have to have the same degree or their degree should be the same or equal for this said differential equation to be homogeneous. What will happen if this one function is homogeneous second degree and this one function of uh, x and y is homogeneous of fifth degree? They are homogeneous, but their degrees are not the same. So your differential equation is not homogeneous, even though the functions present in the coefficients of your differentials are homogeneous. Not homogeneous is your differential equation because the degree of these two functions, m and n, are not equal. Okay? Now another example here, this time we have a specific differential equation. And for the differential of x, you have the square root of the quantity x squared plus y squared added to y. And for your second term, the differential of y, you have only x. Now, the terms under the radical sign is second degree actually. But since it's under the radical sign, second degree under square root, that would be first degree. So then this could be interpreted as first degree, and this is also first degree, the y. And this is also first degree. So this, since your m of x and y is homogeneous of degree one, and your n of x and y is homogeneous of degree one, we conclude that your differential equation is homogeneous. So in here, this is the crude way of testing homogeneity. You change all your variables, variables only, to its product with R, in this case, actually R can be changed to any letter, and then check whether after you factor out the R, you will still have the original function given. In this case, it's preserved. The identity of the original function of M of X and Y is preserved, so it's homogeneous. In the second uh, differential, the dy, you only have one variable, so it's automatically Rx only because x will change to Rx and it is homogeneous of degree one. So our differential equation is homogeneous because your m and your n are of the same degree and are said to be homogeneous. Okay, so since you know already that uh, the particular differential equation have homogeneous functions for its coefficients, uh, in its differentials, then you can now learn how to find the solution. So finding the solution of a homogeneous differential equation class is a two-part solution. It's really a requirement that you have to establish homogeneity, meaning you really have to make sure that your DE in the first place is homogeneous. If it is homogeneous, then it's time for you now to find the solution. Now, what will happen if your DE is not homogeneous, but you solved it using the homogeneous process of solving a DE? Your answer will be really erroneous because a DE that is not homogeneous when solved using the homogeneous technique will not uh, give you its correct solution. So a homogeneous DE will only be solved using or can be solved using the technique for homogeneous differential equation. Otherwise, otherwise, you may use the other techniques that you will be learning also in the coming days. Now, in terms of finding the solution of your homogeneous first order differential equations, there are two options for you to follow. You may opt to use option one, 
you may opt for you to use option two. All have five step rule or five step procedure in finding the solution of your DE. The note in here is only suggested uh, based on practice. So what is suggested here? That if your M of X and Y is simpler in form than your N of X and Y, the substitution equation that you will use is X equal to VY. What's that, what does this mean, class? You will change all the X that appears in your differential equation to VY. Now, if your N of X and Y is simpler compared to M of X and Y, then you may use the substitution equation Y is equal to VX. Now, what will happen, Miss, if my M is complicated, but I still use this particular substitution? You will still actually arrive at the same answer as long as you follow the procedure. The suggestion in here as to what particular substitution equation will you use is uh, only to lessen the time that you will require you to find the solution. As at some ano, at some point class, if you use a substitution equation over another, the solution might be longer. So if you uh, if you encounter such an equation wherein uh, you use the substitution equation x equal to vy, and you are already almost like using uh, the entire paper of yours, and then you are not yet done, and it's difficult for you to process the integral expression, you may start again using a different substitution equation. May, maybe, maybe it will simplify the procedure for you. But there is no clear-cut rule class as to which of the two substitution equation is preferable for a particular homogeneous differential equation. Meaning, bottom line in here class, in practice, you will be able to tell which one, which of these two substitution equation will yield a simpler expression for you to integrate. These are just simply suggestions. Okay. So you have option one. If option one will give you an integral expression that is difficult to process, go to option two. If it's still the same, then probably you may ask yourself, is my problem really integral calculus or my problem is differential equation? Or it could even be algebra because you're, you are not able to simplify the given expression. So there's a lot of things to consider class when we solve homogeneous first order differential equations. But nothing in practice will be too hard as long as you keep on practicing. Okay, now, so option one, you use the substitution equation y is equal to bx. So this is your substitution equation. You change all the y's in that particular uh, de to bx. And since in your DE, you also have dy dx, the y in the differential of y on top of this derivative should also be changed to vx. You need to change it to vx. So what will happen, your dy dx now, changing y to vx will be d of vx over dx. And what is the d of vx? That's to be interpreted as product rule of differentiation. So what's product rule of differentiation? The first term times the derivative of the second plus the second term times the derivative of the first. Since you have it divided by dx to make it appear as a derivative, the product rule we should perform in the numerator should be divided by the differential of x, meaning the two resulting terms after you have applied product rule should be also divided by dx. Now, after which, correspondingly, all the y in the equation should be changed as well. So, I have said that already. Ang tanan nga y nga makita mo sa imod uh, differential equation, you change to bx. Coming from this new variable, b equal to y over x. When you're done solving already for the solution, uh, because class, most of the time, a homogeneous differential equation, when you process it using these uh, steps here, it will end up with a separable DE, which you know already how to uh, determine the solution of. So after you're done separation of variables and integration, you will have an answer which have a V variable. 
Why will you have a V variable? Because in the first place, you have changed your Y to VX. So what you're going to do, you substitute the equivalent expression of the V in your answer already. So meaning all the Vs that appear in your solution should be changed to Y over X. As such, your solution of the DE now will yield an expression which also has the variable, uh, the variables X and Y not variable b and x because your original de doesn't have an x i'm sorry i admitted somebody so that's it for option one for option two class it's still the same you just change the substitution equation y equal to vx to x equal to vy then the differential of x since it has an x will also be processed just like this so so dx will be v dy plus y dv why is that? Because in the first place, uh, let me, this dx here, that dx is actually d of vy, this one. So when you use product rule here, that would be v dy plus y dv. Then replace all the variables in your de, x variables in your de by vy. Replace also the dx by this. Then solve. Most of the time, it's just separation of variables. Once you have the answer, just like what you did here, return the, the v to its original representation from here. What is the v? Your v from this substitu substitution equation is x over y. The v here is x over y. So all the v's that appear in your answer should be changed to x over y so it's a five-step rule remember the substitution equation change the derivative or the differentials taking into account the substitution equation change the variables to its substitution equation solve and then return back the original form of the uh differential equation that is having x and y as variables, meaning whatever is the representation for v, you have to change it. You have to change it to either y over x or x over y, depending on the option that you use. But you have two options. You will not go wrong if you follow this suggestion. But if you don't feel uh, comfortable with having to, let's say, for example, use x equal to vy, you're more comfortable with y equal to vx, then be it. You will still be actually getting the same solution to your differential equation if you did everything correctly. So meaning correct algebra, correct integration, correct manner of simplifying expressions. Okay? Now, any question here as to the options before I give you specific examples? Okay, so there's none. So we will, why can't I click? Okay, so we will now proceed with the example. Now, let's say class, you're, you are tasked to solve the differential equation dy dx equal to x squared plus y squared over xy. If I'm the student, when I was a student before, honestly, class, I won't go through the, I won't, I don't want to go through the process of changing my x and y to rx and ry. I will simply look at the degrees of all my terms. If they are equal, then my differential equation right away is said to be homogeneous. So look at this. This is second degree. This is second degree. And this is second degree. They all have the same degree, so then the differential equation is homogeneous. Now, if you do the crude way of testing, then you have to transfer this xy here. That way, it will be the coefficient of dy. And you have to transfer dx in here on the right side. That way, you will have its coefficient as the quantity x squared plus y squared. You may change all your variables to x. Uh, Rx and Ry for X and Y respectively, but still, I'm sure you will go back to the original expression that you have. That tells you that your DE is homogeneous. So let's say you, we do away with the testing part for homogeneity. You know already 
by inspection that it is already homogeneous, then we start solving. We will simplify this rational expression first. Okay, so we start with this, and then what we do, we distribute the product of x and y to the two terms that we have in the numerator by division. So we divide x squared and y squared by xy. In the process, we cancel this y in here. This leaves us with one. We cancel this. Uh, we cancel the x rather in here, leaving us with one with the upper exponent of the x. We cancel the y in here, leaving you with the one here in on top. A plus this one. So you have one. That leaves you then a simplified form of x over y for the first term and y over x for the second term. If you want your terms to look similar, you can write this in the reciprocal form. That is why you see this negative one, that's the exponent, because this one is to be interpreted as one over y over x. This one will go up, the y remains here, so that is equivalent to x over y. Now, why, why the need for you to write this in the form of y over x so that it will be sim the same with this? So they will look the same. So in manner of simplifying later, you won't have difficulty. Now, this rational expression, this original rational expression is now written in this form. So when we copy the derivative, this derivative in here, it's in here, and this one in here for this original rational expression. So we have this, okay? Now, based on what we have discussed, we have the choice between option one and option two. But look very closely, class, you already have y over x. So meaning the substitution equation that you may use here can be either x equal to by or y equal to bx, depending on what you want to use. Now, in this case, just for illustration purposes, class, what I've used is y equal to bx, which will, of course, require that all the y's here in this equation I change to bx. Now, this one, if written, class, in a different manner, that would be y over x equal to b. So I think you know the reason now why this was chosen, the y equal to bx, because the right side of this differential equation have y over x, which is equal to b. So if we proceed to substitution of the equivalent of the derivative and the equivalent of y equal to bx in our original DE, your dy dx, this one, on the left side will be changed to this. So you have b plus x dv dx. And these two rational expression of y over x is the v, this v here. So you have v raised to negative one, and you also have this v. Now this v and this v, of course, will cancel each other because one is on the left, the other one is on the right, leaving us with this expression. Now this v raised to negative one is actually one over v. She tells you, looking intently at the last line here in our solution, that this is just a case of a separable differential equation. You transfer the v in here and the dx in here and the x below it. Okay, so I will clear this screen now, this page now, so we can proceed to the next. So what will happen if we do that? So this will be the corresponding uh, expression resulting. So you have VDV and you have DX over X on the right side. This one can be solved using power rule. This one yields an LN function. Now, just like what I have mentioned to you when I was discussing separable DE and solutions of differential equations, whenever you see an LN in the answer, for the solution of your DE, it is suggested that the arbitrary constant C should also be in the form of an LN. So in this case class, we represented C as an LN of K. 
There's nothing wrong with writing the arbitrary constant as ln of c or ln of k. Why? Because anyway, its value is arbitrary. So it could be anything as long as it's a constant. So I write this as ln of k. Why is that? Because by the properties of ln, if you have addition of lns, you can actually uh, write it into one ln wherein the arguments are written in product form. So you have one ln and you have these arguments of your original lns written in product form. Okay? Now still your left side would be v squared over 2. Now, if we would like to write the solution of our DE explicit, meaning one variable on the left, the rest on the right, then you may transfer the two in here. So that would give you a V squared equal to 2 ln of Kx. And then since it's a square, you may take the square root of the left side and the right side of the equation, giving you with this one. Now, since when you speak of a square root class, it could be it could be a positive or a negative root, and that is the reason why you're seeing plus minus square root of 2 ln of kx. Now, the last part in finding the solution is you have to return what b, or you have to substitute the equivalent expression of the b. And what is that? That's your y over x. Because in the first place, we use the substitution equation y is equal to bx. So what is v? That's y over x. So this v that you see here should be written as y over x. And you still have this one. And again, if you want the explicit form of the solution, we've discussed the explicit and the implicit form of the solution of a DE, you just need to transfer x on the other side by cross multiplication. So your y equal to plus minus x times the square root of 2 ln of kx is the explicit solution of the original differential equation. Now, there is one thing I'd like to stress in here class. This y class, in, uh, this x rather, should, mat, should not be transferred on the right side like this, huh? like x plus minus square root of 2 ln of kx, like that. This is very wrong. Why? If you write x in this manner, it's like x is added to or added with or subtracted by the square root of 2 ln of x. And that's not cross multiplication. If you transfer x on the other side, it's really multiplication like this. So understood to have a dot there. So since this is positive or negative, then just write the positive or negative before the x, which you multiplied to this function in here. Square root of 2 ln of kx. Okay, I have a question here. Okay, somebody came in late. Okay, so any question in this part? None? So the substitution equation that we use is y equal to bx. Now what, let's have another look on an example which uses a different substitution equation. Okay. Now, your de here, if you look very closely, your de is... Homogeneous. Why homogeneous? This is second degree. This is second degree. This one is also second degree. So it's homogeneous of degree two or second degree homogeneous. Now, if you look closely, class, the coefficient of the differential of x is not simple compared to the coefficient of the differential of y. So this one. So what is suggested here when the differential of y has a simpler coefficient than the differential of x? You use this particular substitution equation. This is under option two. When the coefficient of dy is simpler co compared to the, the coefficient of x. So this is our substitution equation. And this lets us also change dx into b dy plus y db. 
I mentioned that a while ago. So the X here will be changed to VY and you are to perform product rule of differentiation. And this will result to this expression. Now, what will you do? Let me annotate. So what will you do? This substitution equation, X equal to VY, and this uh, expression that will replace the differential of X should be substituted to your original DE. Okay? So uh, X should be VY. So since it's squared, it's V squared, Y squared. You have two Y squared. The DX now will be changed to VDY plus YDV. In here, you change also the X to VY. So you have VY times Y DY. The rest is your algebra. You distribute, you expand, or what, okay, you call it in algebra, you expand by multiplying, okay, like that. Your resulting expression would be this. V cube Y squared DY, dy squared v dy for this two and then you have v squared y cube for this and you have two y cube dv for this and then this one this one was transferred on the left okay so you have now one two three four five five terms on the left side of your de because we have equated the right side to zero the next thing that you will do, class, let me just clear this so it will not be topsy-turvy. The next thing that you will do is you group terms that have the same differential. So what do you mean? First, I look for all the dy's. One, two, three. Now, these two y squared, v dy, can be combined actually to negative v y squared dy. This is negative one, this is two. So if you combine the two, that would be two y squared v. Or that would be rather two minus one. So that would be one y squared v. Now, if you uh, factor out the y squared in this case, and in the first term, you will have v cubed plus the v here multiplied to y squared. If you do expansion, it will give you this one and this two, which have been combined. So that would be for the dy. For the dv, amumalaning dv, one and two. So you have v squared, y cube, and two y cube. So the y cube was already factored out. So that will require you to multiply it to the quantity v squared plus two for this one and this one. Okay? Now, why group terms that have the same differentials? You want to know whether it's your DE can be already treated as a separable differential equation. If you look very closely here, class, your problem with this particular term is this one. Without this, this could be integrated already. Your problem in the second term is the Y cube. Because if you only had this, the V squared plus 2 and the DV, it can already be integrated. So what you're going to do here is use separation of variables. Whatever you want to eliminate for a particular term, divide the entire differential equation by the product of the two. So you will divide by, if I will, by the way, class, uh, factor out the V in here, that would be V times v squared plus 1 because it would be v cubed plus v. For this one, you need the y cubed. So you place here y cubed. So these two terms will be divided by this. So naturally, this one will be eliminated in this side, leaving you only with the y squared. But since you have a y cubed here already and you have a y squared here, what remains in the y cubed is just the y. So this one divided by this will give you a dy over y. v squared plus 2y dv if divided by this will give you v squared plus 2, the y is eliminated. And your denominator here, which one y cube is already eliminated by the way. So you have only v squared plus 2 in the numerator and this one. 
the V cube plus V. This one is already in factored form, while this one is in the original form, the V cube plus V. If you look intently, class, it's already a case of separated terms. The differentials are with the functions which has its variable. So wala sang may nakaupod na V dere, wala man sang may nakaupod na Y dere. Then you can integrate. So actually, if you're going to look in the procedure, your DE process concerning dealing with homogeneous DE is only until this part here. Until here. This part is already your integral calculus. So how well did you learn your integral calculus before? That will be measured in here in the part wherein you're going to integrate. This one is integrable. That will yield you an LN. This one can be written as, if you factor out the V in here, uh, this one, the V in here, um, you may get one of the Vs in here, the second. So, direto ibutang sa babaw, ha? So, this integral would be V dV. The denominator will be, I took already one V here, so I will take one V there. So, that would be V squared plus one. This is the resulting integral expression. You factored out the V and canceled the one of the V in the numerator. In the second expression, you may write this as actually dV over V times V squared plus 1, the equivalent of this, like this one, V times V squared plus 1. And use trigonometric substitution because of this expression here. So in your integral calculus, you may represent V, your variable, by the tangent of theta. Then differentiate this, that would be dV equal to the def derivative of the tangent is second squared theta, d theta. Okay? So if you go back to this original integral, the dV you need to change to second squared theta, d theta. The V you will represent by tangent and the V squared here by tangent squared plus 1. Tangent squared theta plus 1 is equivalent to second squared theta. So, makansela na sila nga dua. How did you know that? It's your, your trigonometric identity. Tangent squared theta plus 1 is second squared theta. So, that leaves you with d theta over tangent. But what is tangent? Tangent is sine theta over cosine theta. So what happens, the cosine goes up in the numerator, the sine is retained in the denominator. If you have this integral, that will yield an ln because this one is your u and this one is your du. So now it's ln of sine theta. So if we go back to this integral and this integral simplified, your answer for the first is the ln of y. The answer for the second will be an ln provided that you place a 2 here and you place 1 half outside. Why is that miss? Because this one is your u and this one is your du. So u, du over u is, of course, yielding an ln. So you have placed here a 2, so there should be a 1 half before the integral sign. So you have 1 half ln. Of ln of what? This one. V squared plus 1. Okay? That would be for the second term here. The third term class, you may wonder, why is it Miss Ali now in terms of V? Your answer in the first place is sine theta. If you recall in calculus, if you use trigonometric substitution, you have to construct the triangle that will represent that particular trigonometric substitution. So if this is V equal to tangent theta, it's understood that the denominator of the V is 1. So this is V opposite over the adjacent is tangent. The hypotenuse of the triangle then is V squared plus 1. So if it's ln of sine theta, the ln of the sine theta, what's the sine? So in this case, that would be the ln of Sine is opposite V over the, uh, the hypotenuse, which is V squared plus 1. But class, you have a 2, right? So my Arika did it 2 here. 
this one, you have a two, a constant two here. So it should be placed in here. But what happens to the two? This is your original expression. What happens to the two written before an LN expression? Again, recall your differential calculus in properties of logarithms. Constants written before the LN becomes the exponent of the argument of such an LN. This is the argument, the entire argument of your LN. So this two will be transferred here. So that would be meaning that you will raise the b in the numerator by two, you will raise the square root of b squared plus one in the denominator by two, eliminating the square root. So now you have this, the ln of b squared over one plus b squared. And since you have answers here in the form of ln, then your arbitrary constant of integration should also be in the form of an ln. All of these are being multiplied, so you can actually, uh, mo all of this, all of these class LNs are being added. So that would be similar to multiplying all their arguments. What do you mean by this, Ms. Ali? I multiply mo ni ang tanan ni arguments nila, kay tungod gina-add sila. That's a property of the LN. If you do that, this square root here will be canceled, leaving with the square root of 1 plus b squared in the denominator. So that is why you have this. And you have b squared and y in the numerator. Why, miss, you already got rid of the ln? Wala naman that miss Ali ang tanan ni ln. It's because when you write everything in ln, left side and right side of the equation, like for example, ln of b equal to ln of d, you may use... The expression on the left side and on the right side of the equation as an exponent of the e, meaning you will raise them, not raise them, but you make them as the exponent of the e. Why? Because e raised to an ln is equal to 1. So that's the reason why you don't see an ln here anymore. You only have the c and you have the y and the v expression. Now, Take Miss Ali, may V pa da gihapon. So may V pa da gihapon. Ano ang V? From here, your V is X over Y. Your V is X over Y. So you change this V here, this V and this V to X over Y. I will eliminate the marking so you can see how it's done here on the right side. Okay, so you can see here that B is equal to X over Y. So this one, this B is X over Y squared. This V is X over Y squared. If you simplify the expression class, that would be for your exercise. The resulting expression is X squared equal to C times the square root of Y squared plus Y squared. Now, this is the answer to your homogeneous differential equation using option two, okay? What will happen if you use option one? Your substitution equation is right here. Y is equal to Vx. In this case, the V was just changed to you because you already used the V in here. By the way, you may, choose the, you may change the letter V to any letter you like, okay? So since we use already V here for X equal to VY, if you use option one, just for illustration purposes, which of the two will simplify the process, then uh, use a different letter. So don't use any more the V. In his case here, U was used, okay? So if you used Y equal to UX as your substitution equation, the process of finding the solution is very short. No? Short lang siya yao. This is option one. This is option two. So actually, as you go along, you see this one. Some of my students, if they're already in this part, uh, which part? Let's say in here. If they have already this integral expression, they will check whether another option will not yield a complicated expression. Look, if you use the substitution equation, you don't see any trigonometric uh, substitution in here that happened in the integral process. It's easier. You can have it here. It's simple. It's just an LN for all the terms. If you simplify, that would go back to this one. 
So this is what I'm saying that there's really no uh, clear cut, uh, shall I say, um, form as to what substitution equation you will use. You will learn as you go along. So if you encounter a difficult integral, you may shift to a different option. Probably it will not give you a difficult integral to process like this one, just for illustration purposes. So now in this particular example, second example, you can see the, uh, uh, the advantage of one substitution equation over the other. And you see the advantage of knowing your integral calculus very well. Because what if you change an, to another option and still your integral will not be as simple as this one? You really have to face the challenge of having to evaluate the integral expression. And this ends class the homogeneous differential equation topic. You just first need to establish, you need first to establish the uh, homogeneity of your differential equation and you may use any of the two options. If asked uh, if this is the longest process in handling or in determining the solution of a first order differential equation, I may say class, if it's not the longest, it's one of the longest procedure and there's no shortcut to it. You can only have a shortcut when let's say for example, you know already it's very lengthy in here, you change to another option because it's shorter this way. Okay, now I will stop sharing. It's almost time and I'd like to hear questions from you if you have any questions or anything there that you would like me to go back to uh, because you need to uh, be clarified. Any question? Uh, for your asynchronous time, that would be your free time, you can practice solving a first order differential equations that are already separable and homogeneous because you know them already. Or you may start already processing the problem set. The problem set that is separable and already homogeneous. If the DE that is in the problem set cannot be solved using separation of variables or is not homogeneous, then it has to wait class. It will have to wait on the topic when it will be discussed by Isali. Okay, it will have to wait. So, ang mas solve yung lang ane, amula na inusobon. And then, the rest, it has to wait for the other techniques. So, by Monday next week, we will start with the third topic, which is exact differential equation. After each type, I will give you a sample problem. A sample problem solved, sample problem which you can use in addition to what I have discussed here synchronously. But that would be for you to read. Okay, uh, not something that we will discuss synchronously because we don't have the luxury of time to discuss, let's say, five examples for each topic. If that is the case, we cannot class or finish the entirety of the uh, course, differential equations. Okay, I will stop recording now. <laughs>